hello students welcome back for the 19th chapter human development of social science in the previous video we have seen about human development index and the meaning of human development in that we have also seen the life expectancy index education index and income index now we are going to see about human development report in human development index from highest to the lowest value of every criterion is decided every index is calculated according to the formula and the formula is the basis of the human development index is obtained its rate is between 0 to 1 for any country human development index depicts the difference that has to be covered to reach maximum one it is from zero to one and each and every country tries to reach to the maximum value one this difference is useful in comparing human development between various nations and on the basis of it it could be known that country is developing in which direction so let us see the human development report since 1990 human development report in short it is known as hdr is published every year human development index of 188 countries included in human development report 2015 and then after it was divided into four sections as per given details in the table you can see the table here and this particular table we are having four sections that is highest then we are having high then we are having medium and then we are having low and even further it is divided into countries with human development then we are having division and order then we are having HDI that is human development index from 0 to 1 as I said 0 to 1 then after we are having the main countries the countries which are having the name in the highest in the high in the medium and the low so let us study first of all the table in this particular table the first we are going to see about the highest highest human development and the division order is from number 1 to 49 that means the countries which is coming from number 1 to the 49th number then we are having the human development index that means the countries who are reaching above 0 0.802 and which are the countries here the main countries is Norway Australia Switzerland Denmark Netherlands America Singapore Britain Japan and France so these are the main countries which is coming in the highest human development and the order of these countries is between 1 to 49 and their HDI is 0 0.02 now let us see the next that is the high high human development and the countries which are here in this particular is from 50 to 105 from 50 to 105 the human development index is between 0 0.700 to 0 0.798 and here we are going to see the countries which are lying in this particular division order that is russia malaysia iran sri lanka mexico brazil china thailand and jamaica so these are the countries which are falling into the second that is high human development now we are going to see our 
next that is medium the medium human development and the division order of this particular countries is from 106 to 243 and the human development index is 0 0.55 to 0 0.698 let us see the countries which falling in this particular order indonesia philippines south africa then iraq and india so our country falls into this particular order that is medium and the hdi is between 0 0.555 to 0 0.698 so as we are going to see this particular positions of the country, our country's HDI is 0 0.609. 0 0.609 is the HDI of our country. And it is at 130th position, 130 among 188 countries. So it means it is included in the category of medium human development countries. And in this particular position, now we are going to see the other countries. Let us study the other countries. That means the low. In the low, that means the number 144 to 188. The year below it is 0 0.550. And the countries which are lying in this particular is Kenya, Pakistan, Nigeria, Zimbabwe and Niger. So Niger, it, it is at the bottom of the list. That means 188th position with 0 0.348 HDI. So this is the Human Development Report. It is published every year. And as we have said earlier, Norway is the country with, which is at the top of the list with 0 0.944 and Australia is placed on second position and Switzerland is on third position while Asian countries Singapore is on 11th position and India is at 130th position. So this is the position of the different countries as per the Human Development Report. Let us see the position of India and its neighboring countries. So here we are going to see about the position of India and its neighboring countries as per the Human Development Report. First we are going to see the order, then the country, then the Human Development Index. So in this particular, the order is 73 number, country is Sri Lanka and HDI is 0 0.759. Then the next country is China with the order 90, that means position number 90 with the HDI 0 0.727. Then we are having at 104th position Maldives with the HDI 0 0.706. Then we are having India on 130th position with HDI 0 0.609. Then we are having at 132 number Bhutan with HDI 0 0.605. Let us see the next. The position of India and its neighboring countries. In this particular, at number 142, we are having Bangladesh with 0 0.570. Then we are having at 145 position Nepal with 0 0.548 HDI. Then our neighboring country Pakistan at 147 number with HDI 0 0.538 then we have at 148th position Myanmar with the HDI 0 
then we have Afghanistan at the position 171 with HDI 0 0.465. So among the neighboring countries of India, the condition of Sri Lanka, China and Maldives as we have seen. Sri Lanka, China and Maldives is much better and they are ranked above India in Human Development Index. And in the next slide we have seen Bangladesh, Nepal and Pakistan. They are ranked below our country. So this is the position of India among its neighboring countries as per the Human Development Report. Now we are going to see the challenges to human development. On comparing first five nations of human development report, it is evident that in India still there is lots of work need to be done in order to achieve all the parameters of health, education and income and national income. Human development is not related with materialistic resources but with life human resource. Challenges which come in the way of progress of human development and according to the HDI, they are specially focused on three particular things. And that three things are health, women empowerment and sex ratio. So first of all, we are going to see the health. So when we are talking about health, it is an important and valuable asset. And in order to make an individual's family and social life great, it is very essential that a person should be healthy. In the development, developing countries like India, attention has to be focused on population growth, common diseases, malnutrition, handicapped, contagious diseases like AIDS, mental disorder and the matters related to the mental disorder. Expenditure on health is only for improving quality of life, but it is also an investment in human resource development. And India has made lots of progress in the field of health. We have been able to make lots of improvement in the child health and child death rate by child vaccination program providing vaccine to the children, vaccine against certain diseases like OPV, BCG, DPT, MMR, measles, typhoid. So these are the diseases for which the vaccination program has been conducted. A campaign has been started against the deficiency of iodine, vitamin and iron. Diseases like plague, smallpox, leprosy have been eradicated completely. But certain diseases like measles, chickenpox, malaria, dengue, hepatitis, leprosy, tuberculosis, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, etc. have been controlled. As a result, men started leading a healthy life. There is a decline in birth rate. Mortality rate, child mortality rate had been recorded. Life expectancy rate is increased. Nutritious food, health facilities and pollution-free habitat is needed for living healthy life. So it has become important to focus on health agenda and the changes to be done regarding our next topic is sex ratio. Indian constitution guarantees equality and justice to all the citizens. And according to census of 2011, out of total population, 48.46% female and 51.54% males are there. If we view from this angle, female not only play a leading role as a human resource in India, but also in the whole world. But due to the biological differences and differences in upbringing and expectations from society, the path of development of male and female is different.
Even today, many families, women are engaged in household household chores, cooking and bringing up children. They do not have any contribution in economic earnings of family or country. They do not have any power to take any decisions in the family. And certain times it is seen that they suffer from inadequate health care. They are deprived from economic and educational rights. Even they experience discrimination in their clothes, games, opportunities of education, food, hangout, ethics and behavior. Certain problems we can see among the women. They become victim of child marriage. They become victim of dowry system, partha system, and the desire to have a son and certain social tradition. There is illiteracy among them. They are deprived from education. They are forced to become victim of child infanticide. They don't have respect in the society. There is a desire to have a son. So they are forced to have a number of children. Social tradition and sexual discrimination. Inequality is seen in economic, political, social, cultural and religious field. Hence, it is said that all the states in India, they have male dominance at a high post, high income, more profit, more salary in industries as well as jobs. Proportion of female members parliament is hardly 12.2% in parliament. The less proportion of female is there. Vidhan Sabha, senior officers, managers, directors of company. Then in the technical fields, commercial fields, there is a discrimination seen in each and every field. It is clearly evident. So the first thing is to remove this inequality from the society. Our next topic is women empowerment. When we are talking about women empowerment, it is the women who are in the center of the whole development process. In any of the developing country, economic empowerment is the main aspect of women empowerment. Economic freedom is essential for women empowerment. If a woman is educated she would educate a house a society and ultimately entire nation our country has started taking steps in the direction and from time to time they have served at the post of the prime minister president and the chief minister of different states women are engaged in jobs like taxi driver or pirate they are active in the fields of social service sports, politics, jobs, and entrepreneurship. Even in the fields of social service, literature, journalism, sports, education, and acting, entertainment, we have been watching women working as a social worker. We are seeing them on TV as an actor, even on the news channels. Women employment is expanding from working as a laborer to work in business and commerce, communication and many other jobs because of increasing education, training and skill program. Still, there is lots of scope for the development. We have to make lots of efforts in this to help women to come out of their house and to work in the vast field of education or in the field of commerce or in the field of entertainment, literature, or journalism or the sports. Hence, this is how we can empower a women for the development process. Next is Women Welfare Scheme. Since 1980, many plans and programs related to women development in India have been implemented. National Commission for Women was set up in 1992. National Policy for Empowerment of Women 2001 was set up by the Department of Women and Child Development. 
they have undertaken programs like strength building, employment, income generation, welfare and supportive services, gender sanitation. United Nations has declared 1975 as a women's year and from 1975 to 1985 it is declared as a women's decade and 2002 was celebrated as women's empowerment year. Only an act has been amended to give the equal right in family property. The next is steps taken to stop women exploitation. For the security of women, 181 Appium Women Helpline has been started in Gujarat for helping women suffering from various types of violence. They also have the guidance for their progress just by making a call. Women code have been set up so that poor women get justice easily and women welfare centers have been set up to solve social, legal and employment related problems of women. Government has become vigilant to provide protection to women against physical, mental and sexual exploitation in their work area. By passing a law in the parliament, working women have been given protection against sexual harassment in government's office, private offices, in their business or if they are working as a maid servant. Next is various schemes for providing equality. Gujarat government has set Women and Child Development Department in 2001 for social, economical and educational progress of women. Gujarat government has emphasized on women empowerment by stressing on three aspects of development. For example, educational empowerment, women health, women safety for uplifting women of poor and common families and women of rural area. And for this purpose, government has started implementing various schemes in women-centered gender budget and with the intention of encouraging girls education, school entrance ceremony and girl education chariot festival was started. And as a result of this, 100% admission and increase in women literacy is seen. In Gujarat, girl child in the villages have less than 35% women literacy rate or the families living below poverty line in urban areas. They are given with their Lakshmi bond at the time of admission in the school, whether it is a primary or secondary school. Under Saraswati Sadhana Yojana, girls have been given 1,50,000 girls have been given cycles free of cost. Girls going out of village to study, they are given the facility to travel in the ST bus free of charge. Then we have Sabla Yojana. In Sabla Yojana, the government has started providing nutritious food to the adolescent girls to develop their skills. Then we have Gujarat government has made certain provisions for women 33% of reservation in government. In local self-government institutions, women reservation percentage has been increased from 33% to 50%. Then we are having Rastriya Svavlamban Yojna in that women, they are, it is uh, they are provided pension even the proletarians and destitute old people destitute the person the people who are not looked after the by the family so other than that destitute widows are also given economic help so that they are not forced to lead a poor life under mission mangalam yojana for economic help economic help for the women through Sakhi Mandal. It is to make them self-reliant. 
for women health e mamta card is also given and it has been started in which pregnant women by issuing the mamta card they are registered through mobile technology and so that the death at the time of maternity may be controlled along with it her regular health checkup is done and after the birth of a child health of mother and child is taken care through vaccination program even her economic health for destitute widows destitute the people who are not looked after by anyone so they they are not forced to lead a poor life then after to save the girl child right that is a save the girl child and beti bachao and beti padhao this kind of beti bachao abhiyan has been started beti padhao beti padhao program has been given the important contribution in women empowerment even the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe women they have been given the chiranjeevi yojana in this particular yojana this particular women they are provided medicines the laboratory test the operation facilities at free of cost so various schemes have been started for women welfare by women and child development department of the gujarat government by extending the coverage of the schemes it is easy to find out or to face the challenges of women empowerment hence we have seen about the various schemes for providing equality to women we have seen the steps taken to stop women exploitation we have seen the steps taken in the direction of women empowerment i hope you have understood the chapter once go through the chapter read it once again and try to understand thank you